fellow gamers? We are the Video Gamers Podcast, hosted by three dads who love gaming. If you haven't already done so, please take a second to rate our show five stars and click the follow button so you don't miss any episodes. We are on socials everywhere at Video Gamers Pod. We have a, an amazing free Discord that you can join using a link in the episode description. And you can sign up to support us through Patreon starting at five bucks a month, and you'll get a shout out, bonus episodes twice a month, lots of other goodies. Just go to MultiplayerSquad.com. I am your host, Paul, and today he is joining me as always, the man who usually has spectacular taste, but sometimes goes a little off kilter when it comes to games like Stardew Valley. It's Josh. Hey, you got it. You know, you can't be predictable if that's one thing that, <laughs> you know, is, is helpful in this biz, as they say. The biz? Yeah, yeah. the biz. Short yeah. for business. Yeah. Well, Paul, shh, come on. Don't give away, Am the, I letting... don't give away the secrets, yeah. Paul. That's right. You yeah. got you to pay yeah. for Patreon support yeah. to get that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff. If you'd like the full <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then joining Josh and me, you know, his leaderboard's a little shorter than Josh's and mine, but that's okay. I'm told it's more about how you use the leaderboard. <laughs> it's Ryan. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> I mean, if you put Take if that, you put Ryan. <laughs> if you put them next to each other, yeah. you know, Ryan's it's about half as long. I, I would say, yeah. probably. <laughs> Ryan doesn't know what to say. <laughs> oh man, I would just say like the the overall kind of um, my scores, mm-hmm. a, a nice mm-hmm. big radius, if you will, of, of scores. <laughs> sure. So a radius of scores. Yeah, it's a big like radius it. of scores. <sighs> I like it. Very, very true. All right. Well, before we start talking about our leaderboard, which is kind of like our breaking down of our top 100 plus games we've covered on the show. Josh, I think you're going to read a review someone left us. I do. Hey, reviews are the lifeblood of this podcast. If you have been a listener for a little while uh, and you haven't left us a review, we would really appreciate you just taking a few seconds to do that on Spotify. You just tap it five stars on Apple. You can leave a written review and rate us five stars there. It just really helps people that are looking for a good gaming podcast to find one. Um, And if you write us a review, there is a good chance we're going to read it on the show like this one that comes in from Paul 427. And it's titled, (laughs) why is Ryan's leaderboard so small? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, why yeah, do I need a yeah, microscope? Yeah. yeah. So all right, yeah, no, yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for real. This one it comes in from Drive It Boy and it's titled Have You Heard of This Pod? If not, well you should have cuz it's awesome. And it says, "This is the best gaming podcast. The audio is great. The humor is great. Everything is great." By the way, <laughs> here's a bonus round idea from the mind of a child. The idea is that you draft characters to be put into different environments. Mario and Cyberpunk's world, as a random example, the winner is the most drafted survivors. Ooh. Ooh. You know, we're due for a kind of off the wall bonus round, too. So we will. Yeah. No promises, but I like the idea. And hey, if you have ideas for the show, we have a Discord server where you can actually make suggestions for topics and bonus rounds and games you'd like to see us cover and stuff like that. We actually do take those to heart. We've had a lot of listeners that have suggested things that we really like and we run with. So come on over to our Discord server. The link is in the episode description. They're going to have to uh, combat with uh, Morgau, though. That's like our designated He's He's, the, he's our lead, uh, lead writer. <laughs> yeah. He's our ideas man. Yeah. Also, yeah. I, also I, I wish everybody could have seen Paul's eyebrows go up when uh, the review said we had great audio. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's an audio man. He's like, oh, yeah? yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was just bracing for something about how we're so family friendly because anytime I make a PG joke in the intro... It's always a review about how clean the show is. So uh, we, it, it, at least, at least this time, it did say <laughs> you know we we were not accused of having high, you know high falutin comedy. It's you know it's a little lowbrow at times. Yeah, I was gonna say we've never been accused of being highbrow. That's for sure. No, no, not at all. All right, so we are talking about a leaderboard review. Now, I guess we should probably clarify for people who don't know, we do have our leaderboard. It's on our website. You can go to videogamerspod.com, and we have on there our top 10 games of all time, which are individually ranked, and then we also have our deep dive leaderboard. And anytime we cover a game, 
we have always rated it against every other game we've done a deep dive on. That way people, if they ever have questions like, what games do you guys recommend? We always say, hey, what kind of games do you like? I'll throw out some ideas and go take a look at the leaderboard. And that's kind of where you can look and see what we like and what we recommend. It's also an easy way for our, our listeners to figure out what kind of gamer is Josh and Ryan and Paul and who am I most aligned with? So maybe I'll take their opinions a little more to heart than someone else. So the problem, though, is that over time, as our leaderboard has gotten longer and longer and we're not like assigning scores or ratings, it's just a list in order of what we like. It's kind of become weird, especially because Ryan has a different number of games that he's covered. There are some games Josh covered that I didn't, games that I covered that you guys didn't. So we just decided to completely revamp the leaderboard and... Honestly, this is something we've talked about for a really long time. What held us back is, quite honestly, just simply the fact that none of us are website programmers, and I did not know how to do sortable tables well. And uh, it turns out if you just spend 45 bucks, you can buy a really nice plugin and it'll do it all for you. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to totally revamp the leaderboard. This is a long time coming. What a yeah. time to be alive. Yeah, <laughs> this is the leaderboard has always been a lot of fun because it is nonsensical. We, you know, putting various games from different genres up against each other has always been, you know, just a little bit of absurdity. You know, mixing a game like Elden Ring and then comparing it to Stardew Valley and saying, okay, where do these games rank was the whole point of the leaderboard. But like Paul said, the problem is, is that over time, it has become so convoluted that it really just doesn't serve a purpose for the listeners, right? Like you can look at the top 10 games and say, oh, okay, well, cool. I haven't played this one, um, so maybe I should. But we feel like it could be more valuable. So instead of being this like absurd thing where we rank games, but it just has not really, it stopped working, I guess, in that regard. So now what we have done is switch the way that we do this to where we think this actually would be like a valuable tool for people to go and look at and say, hey, as a whole, I wish I knew how the podcast felt about a game overall, but I still would like to know, like, I relate to Paul's gaming more than Ryan's gaming. So can I still see like Paul's list at the same time? And so yep. that's what we've done. Um, and Paul, kudos to Paul, because he's the one that did all all of the work on this yep. one uh, as far as getting this all set up <laughs> and making it look nice and something that would be actually like user friendly to people as well. So uh, yeah, kudos, Paul, but we're excited to kind of like unveil this and, and talk about some of these games and maybe some of the changes and stuff too. So we have converted now to a point system, kind of like you see on a lot of other websites we went through, we all decided to rate all the games that we have it's, played on our deep dive. Is it? It's one to 10,000 is the scale, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because, you know, that would really make it easy for our listeners. It, it is on a scale from zero to 10.0. So we are going to the tenth decimal place. And it was very funny as we all went in and added these scores. I went in and did it first because I set up the Google Drive that it, you know, the Google Sheet that it all gets pulled from. I put in all my scores. Josh added a few of his. Ryan added a few of his, and then eventually we got all the scores in here. And I got to start here, Ryan. What? You do not believe in the 10.0 rating. You no. did not rate a single game I, 10.0. No tens, baby. No tens. Why is that? <laughs> because what? Well, okay, so like uh, to start here. Obviously, one of the greatest games ever made, masterpiece, Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah, what is perfect game? Well, no, it's not perfect. It's not nothing. <laughs> is it the seven out of ten gameplay, Ryan? <laughs> it's you no, know, gosh. The, the, well, it's got fishing, so we know that takes it up oh, through the roof. <laughs> that's true for Paul. But does, you can't. Yeah. What I mean, you can't have as a ten because what if you play something better? Then that's but a ten can, as well. No, yeah, it's but, 10 as but well. if it's better, they're not the same. They can't be the same score if it's if it's a better game. So I, if if the next God of War comes out or the next Red Dead comes out and they're better, then there'd be a nine point nine, and so then we can go up. Once I hit ten, you know, then I'm gonna have to figure so, that out. But as of right now, no tens, baby. I, I gotta say, I respect it, Ryan. I really do. I, I respect like Ryan because I thought you were joking initially, where he was no. like, "You guys gave out tens," and Paul and I were both like, "Yeah, dude, these games are <laughs> yeah. masterpieces." And then Ryan's like, "There's no tens." 
And I thought you were joking until I actually looked at your leaderboard. And I was like, dang, he's serious, man. <laughs> that was great. The next day you guys came over and we're like, oh, you weren't kidding, Ryan. No tens. So so your so your idea on this is that this is like almost like a pyramid where there's no such thing as perfection. Yeah. And if a game comes out that is better than Red Dead, you want to be able to give that game that 9.9 since that doesn't exist for you at this point. Exactly. Yeah, that's I mean, it's I mean, think about it. What games in the last 20, 30 years have been better than like Red Dead or God of War? You know, there's yeah, nothing. Zero. So it's going to be I mean, what are we going to have to wait another 10, 15, 20 years before something beats a 9.8? Like, that's just where I'm thinking is, is I think I have time to where a game's not going to be better than that. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I hope there is a game because that would be awesome. But I just I wanted to give myself that wiggle room to where if there was something then uh, and and hopefully we're still doing this in ten years when that happens. <laughs> now, now when you're talking about wiggle room, funny, funny you bring that up, Josh. Do you have our our new leaderboard up? I do. Yeah. Tell tell the listeners what Ryan rated Pacific Drive. <laughs> oh, Pacific Drive. All right, let me hang on. Sure. I gotta. I gotta. First of all, you can sort by our rankings individually, so I can sure. say like, oh, what does Ryan have at the bottom of his list? Yeah. Um, and so if I scroll way <laughs> down to the bottom of Ryan's <laughs> list here, where I have a feeling he uh-huh. put Pacific Drive. Oh, look, there it is. Uh, just under Halo Reach, which he rated a 5.5, which is fair. Yeah. Uh, and here it is. Oh, Pacific Drive, a <laughs> 0.1. That's too high. If I could give so zero, got- I would. <laughs> so you don't believe in the 10, but you do believe in a 0.1 with yes. no wiggle room for anything worse than Pacific Drive. Listen, if I could give it a zero, I would, but I have principles. So I'm just going to give it the point one, so it's on the score. But uh, yeah, man, that's how we do it. I also absolutely love that Ryan's third lowest rated game is a 5.5. And then after that, we have two games that are 0.1. Yes. Oh, <laughs> too funny. Battlefield 2042 is the other. Well, that deserves farther. to be there. Let's be honest. That, I will that, say that's fair. When you put this up, I was doing it on my phone in bed. It was a long day and I was like half asleep trying to go through it. And on the little screen, a bunch of them, because they had dashes before, I had put it in and then later checked it. And I didn't remove the dashes, so a bunch of mine were like minus eight, oh. minus nine. I was like, why are these so low ranked? I was, oh, oh, I have a negative. Whoops. That's funny. <laughs> didn't take out the placeholder dashes. Nope. All right. So let's start by just talking a little bit about the top of the list. And I think this is kind of fun. We'll talk a little bit about our consensus average scores. What's at the top? What are some things in the middle? What are some things at the bottom? And then we can kind of just open things up where maybe we'll ask each other questions like, why is this rated so much lower than that? Or, you know, why did you not like God of War Ragnarok as much as God of War or, you know, whatever it might be. And then at the end, because I'm just the world's biggest math nerd, I did run a whole bunch of statistics. I was kind of curious, like, oh, geez, <laughs> between the three of us, which which combo of two are like the closest gamers? Like who have the most similar taste? Who's kind of like the outlier? What games did we have the biggest disparity? What games did we all rate across the board almost the same? So I'll have some fun stats to share at the end of the episode that I think will be a lot of fun. Out of curiosity, who do you guys think would be the two gamers most aligned? Me and you. You and me, Ryan? I, I, I would say you too. Yeah. Paul, you and I agree. When we agree, we really agree. But I think we have a much bigger gap in the style of game that we like. Whereas I think you and Ryan definitely align more on your gaming takes and choices. Interesting. Except, except See, for I, Zelda. Except Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the same thing because for those who don't know, Ryan is my wife's cousin. And my wife and I started dating when we were 16 at the time. Ryan, I think you were 12. So Ryan and I have basically grown up playing games together. And so we tend to know what each other like. Uh, I will say, to just give a little bit of a teaser of some of these stats, I looked at how many games, Josh, you and I have rated exactly the same. And it's 17 games. Oh, wow. Which is 15% 15% of our leaderboard is exactly, exactly the same the decimal. Same? Okay, that's pretty 9. good. 9.2, 8.5, exactly. Ryan and I do not have a single game. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> the same score. All right, so you know there might be some surprises with all this uh, that are going to be fun to talk about. All right, so sorting our leaderboard by consensus, we do have a clear top two that I don't think are a surprise. 
At the very top, we have two games tied with a consensus 9.9 .9 rating. <laughs> we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and we have God of War 2018. Both of those games, Josh and I scored a perfect 10.0. Ryan scored it a 9.8. So, guys, who knew Josh likes Red Dead 2 more than Ryan? I would have never uh, guessed. Yeah. <laughs> really, Ryan? What's up with that? <laughs> Must have been that uh, gameplay. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> so, this should be said. I mean, at least for me, and I'm assuming Paul did this too, they, to get a 10, a game has to be what I would consider an absolute masterpiece. This yes. is a game that, regardless of your gaming takes, your gaming preferences, this is a work of art or so mind-blowingly good that I feel like almost anybody that enjoys gaming would enjoy this game, you know, at that point. Um, yeah. You know, it, it or a game just resonates so much with me that I think it is perfect for my gaming takes as well. You know, it, it, as far as that goes, I mean, you know, we'll talk about it. I have Rocket League rated pretty darn high. Um, I did not give it a 10 because I don't think it's a 10 game for a lot of people. But, you know, we only have what, five tens each, Paul? Yes, you and I each have five. Yeah, tens. We each have five tens. I mean, out of 100 games. That is a very low percent of games to say, hey, this is this is truly a masterpiece of a video game. Um, you know, Ryan's real close on a couple, but, you know, no tens from Ryan there either. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, that's not to say these are perfect games because I can definitely find flaws in anything. You know, I'll use God of War as an example because that is one of my favorite games of all time. The enemy variety kind of sucks. You know, that's a, a a good criticism against that game is it says, hey, it starts to reuse a lot of the animations. The enemy variety is not that great. Everything else about this game is incredible. Why couldn't you just throw some more variety in there and then it would be perfect, right? So, so so they do that. They they remake the game and they do that for you. Then what do you score it? A 10 because it's still oh. an absolute masterpiece. Oh, so it's the point. same score as the other game. Yeah, Ryan wants like the, <laughs> he wants like the echelon, like the, the, this is the, the king of all games sitting at the top of the list. I'm just waiting for it yeah. one day. <laughs> Eventually yeah. Ryan's scores are going to be 9.9978. <laughs> yeah. And then that way he's got that leeway. Yeah. Now I, it, we should have said this from the outset. We are not saying that, as the consensus 9.9 .9, that Red Dead 2 and God of War are the two best games ever made. We, we, we don't have on our leaderboard games that we have not done a deep dive of. So we haven't done, for example, Half-Life 2 or like Super Mario Brothers 3 or anything like that. So it's just looking at games that we did deep dives for. But, you know, those are not a surprise. You know, uh, looking at our top tens of all time, Ryan has Red Dead 2 as his favorite game of all time. It's my number two of all time, right below Mass Effect 2. Not surprised to see it. Similarly, God of War, Josh has as his number two of all time. Ryan, you have it number four. So I don't think we're surprised to see those at the top. Uh, Josh, why don't you just go ahead and tell us what your five perfect ratings are? Yeah. And yeah, and then Ryan, you and I can jump in if we're surprised by any of these. And, I mean, th again, this goes to remind you, like, I am somewhat critical of Red Dead Redemption's to gameplay, right? And I'm talking like mechanics because we have had this argument back. Ryan's already shaking his head. <laughs> I should clarify: there's two gunplay and gameplay. Yes, are and different. that's the thing: the mechanics of the game, the gunplay in the game, I find to be rather lacking. If you're talking about the gameplay overall, like the horseback riding and interacting with characters and just, you know, that interaction with the world, it's second to none in that regard. Um, but again, there's always a flaw to be found in a video game. But, you know, these are my absolute cream of the crop must play games. Um, and that is Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War 2018, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Overwatch of old. I have to clarify that sadly because <laughs> I despise Overwatch 2 as in its current iteration. Um, is that Goat's Era Overwatch? Oh, man, that's actually when it started to, to fall <laughs> off, man. Yeah. Pre Goats. Yeah. Pre Goats Overwatch Pre -goats one. was just peak. So um, I hate that I have to put that disclaimer on there, but I do. But, uh, and then Elden Ring. Um, I mean, what a variety of games, number one. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, those are absolute cream of the crop video games. Yeah. My top five have three of the same. So Red Dead 2, God of War, and Cyberpunk are in there. My other tens are Disco Elysium, 
Uh, what a fantastic game. I, Josh has a 9.6. We both absolutely love it. Yeah. And then my other 10 is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I know both of you are, you know, maybe not surprised that I would rate it that, but something that would not be in the conversation for you as a 10.0. Now, just to reiterate to people too, so that it doesn't get lost in uh, us rambling some, but these are only games that we have covered for the podcast. So yeah. I'm curious, Paul, where would you put Breath of the Wild? Would that be a 10 as well? Or do you feel like Tears of the Kingdom improved the formula to make it a perfect 10? 100% improved upon it. It plays better in a million ways. Breath of the Wild, I would probably put either a 9.5 or a 9.6. Okay. It would be crazy high, but yeah. not as high as Tears. Yeah. Okay. I was Dude, curious. That, that Ultra Hand is just so cool. So cool. There's yeah, just nothing absolutely. like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then let's take a look at the very bottom of our consensus. We have coming in dead last, Battlefield 2042. I rated it a 2.0, Josh a 1.5, Ryan a 0.1. <laughs> and then uh, apologies to previous host Michael the Butler, his favorite game, Elite Dangerous. <laughs> we have coming in at a consensus 1.5, thanks to a 2.0 from me. 1.0 from Josh. Ryan has not played, so uh, you know, he, he did not rate that. Dodge yeah. the bullet then, on that one. Yeah. And then rounding out the bottom, we also have Hood Outlaws and Legends at 2.8. Most of our listeners probably don't even know what that was. I think people would be shocked to see us have Escape from Tarkov here at a 3.0. Ryan, uh, did you ever play Escape from Tarkov? Because I know you did not for the show. I think I checked it out a little bit, but not enough to like give it a rating. But I was actually, speaking of surprise, I was surprised that it was this low when, when I pulled up the leaderboard to look over everything. Yeah, why, why do we have that one so low, Josh? It's just, it's not fun and like i I, and i listen we have work we have a lot of listeners that consider escape from tarkov like one of their favorite games ever and i i understand it i'm happy for you i'm glad that you found something that resonates with you our personal gaming takes are we don't generally get into the super sweaty uh ultra competitive kind of frustrating games And I just find Tarkov to be frustration. The idea of getting all this gear and wandering out into the world and then getting killed by a guy that was hiding in a corner just infuriates me. Um, Mm -hmm. If you look at a similar game called Valorant, which again, we know a (laughs) lot of people absolutely love. If you love Valorant, you really love Valorant. Um, And I get that people like that gameplay loop. But at the same time, we played Valorant for a while and we just started going, dude, I don't like the, like the, I don't like the sweatiness of this game, rounding a corner and getting headshot within a, 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 you know, a 10th of a second. And then just sitting there and having to watch the rest of my team play out this match. People are mad at you. If you make one mistake, that's not that great of a community like that. Like we don't like frustration in video games. Um, And I can hear it now. There's going to be people, but Josh, you like Elden ring. And isn't that really hard and frustrating? And it's like, not for me. (laughs) You know, yeah, like yeah. I like a challenge. A I don't like frustration. It's that's kind of how I was with uh, Destiny, um, with like Trials of Osiris. It's you know you can go in and it's like where the cream of the crop goes to to play PvP on there. And I got a buddy that like I didn't mind it, it and it gets sweaty, but I thought it was fun. And and if guys were better, they were just better. But my my friend just hated he hated playing when we would lose, so he would just never play it. You know, so he oh. wasn't he wasn't a big fan. He's like, no, I don't I don't want to play trials. I was like, come on, let's play some trials. He's like, we just get walked over every time. I'm like, so? <laughs> you know, it's fun. But yeah, that's yeah, it's it's it sucks when games get so salty like that that it's just not enjoyable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that gives some insight into how we're rating games. Like from a technical perspective, Valorant runs amazingly well. It accomplishes exactly what it's trying to do. In that sense, it would be like a 9.0. I just hate it. I don't like the genre. I don't like the sweatiness. I don't like where you can't even look around the corner and you're already dead. And so you and I, Josh, rated it a 4.0. That's just our personal gaming take. We are not hardcore journalists. We are not rating this like you would expect from actual critics. We're just normal dudes who are dads that like gaming. And for better or worse, this is how we feel about it. Yep. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a short break and then we'll come back. All right, guys. So we kind of covered our consensus top and bottom. As you kind of look at our leaderboard, is there anything that stands out? Is there like 
something that you're surprised by one of the other person's rating, or maybe you think it's too high or too low on our leaderboard. Anything that kind of stands out Ooh, to you guys? I got one. Oh, all right. I got one right now. Why the heck? It's all the way down at a 6.6 for consensus. Okay. Josh, how are you going to give No Rest for the Wicked an 8.2? <laughs> Dude, that, it's, it's one of our biggest disparities. Okay, yeah, I and I'll, I actually will defend this, and I will give some updates on this game too because I've been following the development and the patches since it's an early access game. I like action forward combat. I like role playing games. I like progression, and I get that you guys really didn't get into that gameplay loop for No Rest for the Wicked. What were some of our complaints? No button mapping. Uh, the fact that your stats, you're locked in, you can't try out other weapons. Um, dude, if you actually look at the patches, they have they have solved every complaint that we have had about this game. I mean, unless you just don't like the gameplay itself, but I actually like that because it's an RPG. I mean, it's a it's an action RPG. Like that's one of our favorite genres. But I mean, it's really funny because all of the complaints that we levied against that game, and you two were a little bit more vocal and they tended to irritate you guys a little bit more than me, the developers have said, you know what, you're absolutely right. Now, I, we're not solely responsible for this by any means, but I mean, you know, I think we can relate to gamers, uh, you know, as a whole who also voice the same concerns. And they said, you're absolutely right. You should be able to use various weapons. And you know what? Yeah, you should be able to rebind your weapons so you don't just roll off of a cliff. And gathering materials should be a lot easier if we're going to do this kind of thing. Um, and they've been, they've already fixed most of what we complained about on this game. So for me, I like the art style. I like the combat. I like the progression elements. I like the world that it's in. So I, I did not hate this game nearly as much as you guys did. Whatever. I'm going to come across this ledge so I can talk to you a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't like early access games. Like put out the beta for it. free. Fix the issues there. You'll still get the same feedback. But no, they release these early access. They charge you thirty bucks, forty bucks, or whatever, and then and then they got your money. And then it's a game you didn't like, you know. So what's funny though is you say it's a six point six, which you think is too high because of my rating. Because my eight point two is pulling that rating up. Uh, Paul has it at a five point five, and you have it as a six point one. Ryan, yeah. So you think it should be lower. I just think your rating should you be think, lower. Yeah, you think my, no, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's, yeah, a, I think I think it's a solid game that has only gotten better since we played it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they fixed some of those things, but I think it's uh, I don't know. I guess it's just one of those things too, where it's just not what we like, you know. Yeah, I believe I even said on that deep dive because I think you even asked Josh, like, what if they fix these things? And I was like, unless they completely revamp the combat system. I just don't think it's going to be for me. So I was so hyped too. I mean, oh, we me had too. it as one of our most yeah. it anticipated looks, of the year. Looks real similar to that new Dragon Age game coming out, Paul. <laughs> oh oh boy, no, don't goodness. get, don't set them off. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, taking a look here, one that I think is a little curious and I want to hear more is Fall Guys. So Josh and I played that a lot together. We mm -hmm. have not played that with you, Ryan. I think you have played that a lot, maybe with your kids. I have it rated as a 5.0, Josh 4.0, and Ryan, you've got it at 7.5. You're a much bigger fan of Fall Guys. What Dude, is it about that game that you like? Fall Guys is so fun. It's just one of those uh, kind of like Bopple Battle. It's just dumb fun. You know, and you got those goofy little characters kind of waddling around. Um, you can put on like pigeon costume. I played it a ton with some <laughs> friends. We'd go over, you know, have some have some brewskis and, and play Fall Guys for like an hour, you know, or or like you said with my kids, I'll sit and just kick it on and we'll play, you know, for a while. I thought it was a very enjoyable game. How I try to do my scale is like anything like kind of 7.5 is just a good game. It's, it's like yeah. kind of in that area where it's a good game. You know, you can not like it. I won't argue with you. You can love it and, and I'll agree or whatever. So kind of in that range is just a good fun game. And that's where I tried to kind of base the rest of my ratings on. Why do you have it a little bit lower, Josh? I just find it to be frustrating, dude. And this goes, this kind of follows the same train of thought with Tarkov and Valorant and stuff like that. I am a very competitive person. I love multiplayer competitive games. 
So before anybody's like, oh, you just don't like competition. It's like, no, I love competition, man. What I don't like is randomness that affects the competition. <laughs> um, and, and that's honestly the biggest problem that I had with Fall Guys is it's like, I, I'm a pretty mechanically sound gamer. I, you know, I, I, I have a lot of faith in my skills in most games. But when you throw an element like a door that won't open or just look out a banana, a giant banana. (laughs) Yeah. A guy that bumps into me. And because he bumped into me in a horde of 50 other people, it bounces me off the ledge. Like to me, (laughs) yeah, or grabs you and pulls you back. (laughs) Yeah. Or grabs me and pulls me because he wants to just troll somebody like that stuff really is hard for me to swallow because it's like, I want to be competitive. I want to win this match and through no fault of my own, now I'm out of the match and I just have a really hard time with that. It's honestly one reason that I have stopped playing Hearthstone, which was for a long time one of my favorite games. But the random, the randomness, that RNG of the outcome of my game being decided through nothing I did, it just it's so hard for me to stomach, man. And Fall Guys is a perfect example of that. Yeah. When you've got five doors and only one you can run through. You do introduce that element of randomness. And especially if you're grouped in a party, if that screws you up where you get eliminated and now you're stuck spectating for a long time, that is kind of hard to swallow. Uh, Ultimately, I think my biggest beef is that, and maybe this has changed. To be fair, I haven't played Fall Guys in like two plus years. But they used to have only like eight different games for round one. And you would keep playing the same ones. And I always wanted to get to like rounds three and beyond because those are the games you don't get to play as much. And so ultimately it was like, oh, I got to play this again. Or now I'm stuck on the bad team and I'm the only one trying. So even though I shouldn't be eliminated by randomness, I just got put on the yellow team and now they got eliminated. So it was like I loved it for the first five hours. And then as soon as I started caring about trying to win then Uh, i kind of hated it that was my problem so for me it's like if i can just jump in and just laugh and have a good time and who cares who wins that's how you're gonna have the most fun with fall guys yeah Uh, yeah we did play that very early on i mean we played that game at release and within i think the first two weeks is when we really started to see the hacking in that game come into play as well which completely ruins a game like that because your goal is to make it to the end of the the level and when somebody just flies through the level and automatically makes it it just instantly takes away any fun at that point yeah so i have a question for you guys as you sort by your own list is there a certain game or a certain rating where you would say it's no longer fun? So kind of like, you know, is there any kind of like strategy in how you're tearing things out? Because I can tell you exactly where it is for me. For me, the, uh, the, the line is 6.5. Anything above 6.5, I would say is a positive experience. You know, did I absolutely love lost Ark 12 minutes, the saints row reboot? No, but I still enjoyed playing it. The games that I have below that, I'm talking, uh, you know, and, and I hate saying it because normally I love RPGs like this, but Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire just did not do it for me. The stuff below like that, Cuphead, Atomic Heart, um, Sea of Thieves, those are games that maybe had some elements that were fun, but on the whole, I decided I don't like that game. So if you asked me any game that's 6.5 or below, do you like it? I'm going to say no. Do you guys have anything like that in your lists? That's interesting, Paul, because when I started looking at my list, I got to Tribes of Midgard, Humanity, Saints Row, Gotham Knights, Little Nightmares. And I kind of went, yeah, those are all games that I would be happy to never play ever again. (laughs) (laughs) But then it made me kind of realize that, you know what, there's a couple games like maybe I need to make a few fine adjustments on some games because like, for instance, Torchlight 2, like it's a dated game compared to Diablo and Path of Exile and things like that, but it's not a bad game in and of itself. Do you know what I mean? So I think I agree with you that in that six, once a game hits 6.5, I just kind of go, dude, there's better games out there. Don't waste your time, you know, (laughs) but that makes me realize that I probably need to tweak like a couple games Um, like tiny Tina's wonderlands, right? I have that at a six, you have it of a 5.5. 
Mechanically, yeah. that game is fine, dude. It's a Borderlands game. It doesn't suck. It just sucks in what we wanted that game to be. It was just a rehashed DLC instead of a you know an expansion, and it reused all the assets and stuff like that. So I think we were just more disappointed than it being a bad game in that case. So it's tough because there is a part of me that wants to look at a game and say, would other people enjoy this? And if I think they would enjoy it, I kind of naturally want to rate it higher. But then I have to remember that our leaderboard are our own personal preferences, right? And so that's tough to do though, because when I look at a game and I go, oh, you know what? Somebody might really like Gotham Knights or Humanity, for instance, you know, but then I go, I just didn't really like those games, man. So, yes, I agree with you that once it hits 6.5, I think there is just a cliff where it's like, why? Why why play these games when there's just a million other games out there that are better? I think you're way too low still on RimWorld. I'm just honored that RimWorld is above 6.5. You have it at 6.8, so at least it's a game you would say had some can, redeeming qualities. And that's the thing. I can appreciate a game that I know it's a good game. It's just not for me. But then at the same time, we just got done trashing Valorant and Escape from Tarkov (laughs) because we find them super frustrating. And then it's like, no, nobody could like this game. This game's terrible. But, you know, it's tough, man. It's a tough thing. Like, I I remember when we first started doing this leaderboard, I looked and of course, like Paul does, because he's the master of planning and he's super organized and everything. And he's got his he's got his list done. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, okay. So then I was like, I'm not going to look at Paul's list because I don't want to get influenced by how he ranks. And, but then I started just throwing games. It's like throwing darts at first, man. And I remember mentioning like, I don't know what a 7.6 game is. Like, how am I supposed to know what these ratings are, guys? Like, you know, and then I remember like complaining about this because I'm like, what the heck is the difference between an 8.2 game and a 7.6 game? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, when we when we I remember when I first joined the pod, like Paul was start was hitting me up for like weeks. He's like, Ryan, we need your leaderboard. He's like, rank, yep. rank your games whenever you get a chance. Figure out the ones you played and rate. And I'm like, how how do I do this? Like, get them all in orders. And then I'm like, wait, I have this one here. Now I need to swap this one. And then same with doing these these scores. Kind of where do you where do you set these up? And like the six point five, I think is a really good number because like below that, you know, I think anything lower than that in the sixes is just not for me. And maybe some people would like it. And then I think anything below six, I would just say, you know, steer clear. You don't want to play that game. But like, because I have, um, I have like Humanity and uh, No Rest for the Wicked, Death Loop, all those. Like, I just, yeah, they're just not, not my type of game or games that I would like to play. But um, yeah, it, it was tough to do all this, all these rankings. It took me a while. Yeah. We even, I remember we even had people in the Discord were like, Ryan, get your leaderboard up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we want to see. I was getting called so- out. Since you did bring up Deathloop, do you guys think as a whole people would be surprised how low we are on it? It's a consensus 6.5. So for us, it's kind of right on the edge. I gave it a 6.4. I am very low on Deathloop. Ryan is even lower, 5.9. Josh, you've got it at a 7.2. You know, famously, it won a lot of Game of the Year awards. A lot of people thought it was going to win at the Game Awards, and it was It Takes Two instead, right? Wasn't it? I think that was the year. Yeah. Yeah, are we too low on Deathloop as a whole? I don't think so. I, 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 like, <laughs> like, honestly, I'm a little bit higher than you guys, and we just kind of talked about that 6.5 drop off. I think Deathloop is worth playing. Like, I, you know, again, it's not, I don't, I'm it's not right shouting it to the world or anything, but I mean, yes, it is on that edge. There's some things that it did very well, but there's just, there just wasn't enough there. You know, the gunplay wasn't super tight. The story was kind of eh. The it just kind of got boring after a while, man. That's you know, it, exactly what I was gonna say. I, I I remember playing this, and then after so many hours, I just remember sitting there thinking, "Why am I still playing this?" Like I, I was just playing it to play it, like going through the motions. I had no investment, no care. I was just bored, just playing a game just to play it because I paid now, you know fifty bucks or whatever. Deathloop is arcane, right? Wasn't that yes. Arcane Studios that, that made yes. Dishonored, which that was the thing, right? Is like when you make Dishonored, which is a phenomenal video game, 
And you have that hype behind the, hey, your choices are going to matter. You can approach things a, a dozen different ways. You get these cool abilities that really make you feel like you can play the game the way that you want to. And then Deathloop came out. It really kind of faltered in that regard. Again, mechanically speaking, the game is fine. It runs well. It you know it plays well, but it just got old real fast, man. Totally agree. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take our last break, and then we'll come back and start to wrap things up. All right, we are back. Anything else you guys noticed? Anything else you want to talk about? Or do you want me to start hitting you with some stats? I I just want to ask you guys, because I just got done whining about how I had no idea how to rate these games. You know, like (laughs) what's a a 5.5 versus an 8.6 and and so on and so forth. And for me, it really didn't come together until I actually kind of threw everything at the wall and gave everything a rating and then was able to kind of look at it and say, okay, I like this game better than this game. So obviously it needs to be up at this level. And then this game I feel like is worse. So I'm going to drop it down like 0.4. And for, for my brain, what worked in this rating system was almost to look in the end as like what like tiers almost, right? Like we talked about the perfect 10 games that, Hey, we said, Hey, these are absolute must play games in our opinion. Nines, dude, I feel like almost anybody in the world would enjoy a nine or higher game. Yep. Game of the year territory. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then it's like eights for me. I mean, I'm looking eights are all really good games. Like maybe they won't hit for everybody and maybe they had a flaw or two, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, So like for me, I'm looking through everything that's in my eight range and I'm like, dude, these are all good video games. And then, you know, so, so, you know, not to just go through the whole list or anything, but it's like, so I wound up looking at my list and kind of going, these tiers make sense to me. You know, if it's in the seven range, if it's in the eight range, if it's in the nine range and so on and so forth, and then I could make the fine tuning adjustments with like using the decimals to say, I think this game's ever so slightly better than this game kind of thing. But I really broke it down like that. Did you, I mean, we kind of picked on Ryan for doing the the king of the hill almost, right? With the, <laughs> like not giving 10. So it's like, is that actually how you approached it, Ryan? Like, I'm just curious how you guys went about the, like the actual process. Yeah, I try to look at it as like, where's a good median um, and like for just a good quality game, like I was saying earlier, like a 7.5 is just like a good game, you know, check it out or don't, but I think this is a really good game. I think anything in the eights, like 8.5 is the middle there where these are these are great games. You should definitely check them out. Lower scale, you know, 8.2 is kind of the bottom low rung of that. 8.9s, 8.8s is like, hey, this is really good. It's almost like an amazing game. And then anything in the nines, I think, is you got to play it. And then we have that top level. So I, I try to kind of arrange each section, but it's like seven is pretty good. Eight are great games. And then nines are like, you, you got to check these out. Yeah, so the way I went about my list was I, I I put all the games in order on my current leaderboard and I said, okay, I know these are tens, uh, despite like what Ryan said. I literally said on the God of War pod, this is a perfect game. I think I said it like four times, <laughs> so I have to give it a perfect score. And then I was like, okay, that's clearly the end of a tier. So now I'm going to start looking around 9.5. And then I would kind of scroll down and say, okay, well, this is a nine range. So now between nine and 10, let me put them in order and then kind of fine tune it. Okay. That I like Resident Evil four, um, for example, a little bit more than Metal Gear Solid five. So I went ahead and gave Resident Evil four, the 9.3, and then I gave the Phantom Pain a 9.2. And I was like, you know what? Outriders, I think it's right on par with the Phantom Pain. That's also a 9.2. But now we've hit another tier. So Persona 5, that's going to be a 9.1. And I kind of did markers. Like, I think that's an 8. I think that's a 7. I think that's a 6. And then I tried to take them like one point at a time and then kind of fine tune it from there. I I only went as low as 2. Josh went as low as 1. Of course, Ryan, you went all (laughs) the way down to 0.1. Yeah, I'm Um, extra. Are we... Are we... um is this going to be a little fluid? Like if, if we, something updates, can we change her? Cause I, I look, cause you got, you had Jedi survivor as a six and now that's not a six game. And you, you ranked it that because of your issues with the PC. Oh, you that's, know. A, that's a six game. That was because <laughs> your, your issues. You know, are you, 
Dude, that game sucked. It's, su- oh. it's funny you mentioned that, Ryan. I yeah. was going through the, literally this morning, and I was going through my this new leaderboard, and I saw Jedi Survivor. I had it what? ranked fairly <laughs> low, right? I, I literally was, I think I was in like the six and a half range or something like that. And then I went, you know what? The game ran like absolute garbage. I was disappointed in how they approached the sequel to one of my favorite games, which is Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. So it was a letdown. But it's a pretty darn good video game overall. You know, yeah. like, was I disappointed as a sequel? Yes. Did we have some serious performance issues on release? Yes. But is it a good game that I would recommend to people? Also, yes. So I actually bumped it up significantly this morning. Yeah, no, definitely um, if you went to so, eight. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the other beauty of this is I think our plan is to keep this fluid, you know, okay. um, unlike the other leaderboard where it was like very rare that we would ever shift things around on this one. I'm assuming and, you know, that our goal is to say, hey, yeah, I feel like this game needs to be bumped up a little bit. This game needs to be bumped down a little bit and so on. So it's actually like a a living, breathing like ranking for the games that we've covered on this podcast. For sure. And part of the reason that we never really updated the leaderboard is that I had to manually update the website. <laughs> now Paul. that it pulls from our shared Google sheet, any of us can go in there and change scores at any time. I think we just need a gentleman's agreement that, one, we don't change each other's scores. Oh, that's the yes. first thing I thought of like <laughs> instantly right now. <laughs> and two... I don't think we should try to game the consensus rating. Like, okay, I have this at nine, but because you guys are too low on it, I'm going to put 9.9. That way it bumps up. Like, nah. I, I think we just need we an got agreement integrity. not to do I that. mean, that's that's yeah. one of the things we've always had is, I mean, we we have always suggested games to people. We have always said, hey, this game works for me. It doesn't work for Ryan, you know, or something like that. So, yeah, I, 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 you know, I wouldn't approach it that way either, to be honest with you. I mean, plus disagreeing is part of the fun, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, honestly, like, I mean, it's so funny. Like, there's a guy that I see on X all the time that absolutely loves Forspoken. He thinks it's one of the best games that he's played. He loves it. He loves the the writing, the gameplay, and all that. And I just kind of shake my head and I go, man, I don't get it. But at the same time, I'm super happy that this guy loves this game. Like, we're not... You know, we don't have that like, oh, you're dumb for liking that game. Like, I can say that to Paul because Paul's, you know, my (laughs) friend, right? But but it's like, but I would never say that to somebody else and and actually mean it in that regard because people have different gaming takes, you know, as far as that goes. So, yeah, trying to game it would just defeat the purpose of it at that point. Yeah, like you like you guys having it at 6.5 and 6.9 for Fortnite. What's the deal with that? <laughs> That's where it belongs. No, yeah, wait, Fortnite's pretty, sweet. Is I, I am not ashamed of how much I like Fortnite now. Fortnite <laughs> has to be below PUBG. It has to be below Warzone. It has to be below Apex. Like That's also a little bit of it for me is yeah, between all sense. the free-to-play Battle Royales, you know, I'm going to have to put them in a certain order. By the way, on our leaderboard, if anyone doesn't know, you can click the name of any game and it'll go to links to listen to those deep dives. And several of them, I also ran AI summarizers on the subtitles in our YouTube videos. So, for example, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, I brought it up. And so here's how AI summarized this part of the show. It says the hosts give their individual ratings for Jedi Survivor, two of them rating it make love and one murder. They discuss the technical issues, the lack of challenge in combat, disappointing boss fights, and limited locations in the game. They struggled to decide on a ranking, but ultimately settle on placing it 49 on their leaderboard. That was, you know, back when, uh, you know, the, the under the old leaderboard system, yeah. but... Yeah, that and the loot boxes were all really lame cosmetic. All right, you know, maybe yeah. I need to move it back down now that you reminded oh, me about all that stuff, Paul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the good guys win. All right. Well, let me hit you guys with a couple yeah, of stats here. I'm curious on this, man. Because I think it'll also spark a little bit of conversation because I'm also going to share, like, where did we rate games different? All right, Josh, you and I, I ran our numbers first. We have both rated 111 games. 17 of them I already shared. We have the exact same score. For example, Dead Island 2, we both rated an 8.4. Just, you know, hilariously exact same. And then I looked at how many are within 0.2. 
because we've said on the show a lot that you and I are, quote, very different gamers. I've heard you say that a lot. The number of games within point two is 34 out of 111, which means 30% of our reviews are within 0.2. They're quite close. On average, we rate games within 0.8 of each other on the whole. My gaming brother! (laughs) We are gaming brothers for sure. Now, um, we, uh, what do you think is the game we have the most difference oh, in our rating? Absolutely, Stardew Valley or Outer Wilds. It is neither. What? Shockingly, no. I would have bet that for no. sure. No, is it Rimworld? We have a game. Is it Rimworld? Nope, not Rimworld. I don't I know. Have no idea. Phasmophobia. Really? Oh. That is our biggest difference. It what? is three for me and a seven point five for you. So it is a huge, massive difference there. For really? phasmophobia. Yeah, you yeah. really didn't like phasmophobia. <laughs> <laughs> the games that we were the most different on were Stardew Valley, Rimworld, Outer Wilds, No Rest for the Wicked, Steel Rising, Phasmophobia, The Forest, Monster Hunter World, Pacific Drive, and Forspoken. My Forspoken rating is very low at five. It's just that you have it so low yeah. <laughs> that we had a bigger difference there. Oh, I'm so, so mad at that yeah. game. I don't apologize so, for that. Yeah. So yeah, thirty percent of our ratings are almost exactly the same. Average difference of 0.8. After that, I ran me and Ryan. We have forty-two games that we've both rated. Not a single one exactly the same, which is zero percent. If uh, <laughs> if anyone wants to know, within 0.2 of each other, though, we did have eleven out of forty-two, which was twenty-six percent. Oh wow! Almost the same as me and Josh. Our average difference is zero point eight five. Almost the same, but surprisingly a little bit more different than I think most people would guess. Uh, What do you think is our biggest difference in score? Um, I got news for you. It's a game we both hate. It has something to do with you (laughs) rating some things incredibly low. (laughs) It's either uh, (laughs) Battlefield or uh, what's the other one? Oh, Pacific Drive. Yeah, it's yeah. Pacific Drive. Yeah, Pacific Drive. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. You're I can't 4. believe 5. you gave Pacific Drive a point one. Like, yeah. that game had Well, here, issues. hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you. Let me get out of my... Oh, wait. No, nope. uh, put it in park. <laughs> Let me get the... Oh, okay. All right, I'm out. Okay, I'm out of the door. Oh, wait, no, I didn't put... Oh, my car's rolling away. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> All right, fair. <laughs> fair enough. The game had some issues. Remember my dumpster that yeah. kept yeah. shooting out all the <laughs> fake, we all the fake so panels. Excited for that you had the Santa too. dumpster, dude. It was like, here you yeah. go, here you go. We so Oprah, no, the Oprah that. dumpster. You get a door. You, you get, get a, a door. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Uh, so Ryan, the games that we had the most different were Hollow Knight, Fortnite, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Fall Guys, Halo Reach, and Pacific Drive. One point of clarification on Halo Reach, that's the one I think more than any other game people come into our Discord and say, why do you have Halo Reach so low? That game was a classic when it came out. And I'm always quick to say, I completely agree, but we are playing those games today and rating them. And Halo Reach, in my opinion, does not hold up at all. The fact you don't have aim down sights, the fact that you don't have sprint unless you pick a class that has sprint, all of those things kind of hurt it for for me and Josh. That's why we have it a bit low. Um, So I I was a little curious, Ryan, like, have you played Halo Reach recently or is this more like going off when you played it in years past? Oh, mine was was from years past. It was. Yeah, Yeah. it was still kind of meant, but it was definitely not um, like this year or anything. Because we have some friends that will still play Halo Reach, oh, and really? Josh and I think they're crazy. Yeah, like, that is crazy. You can go play Helldivers. You can go play Apex or Call of Duty or X Defiant. You, even Overwatch. Like You have all these options. How that's, can you still play Halo Reach? And that's the tough part, because like for me, if we're going by what is the game, if we rated it today, like Overwatch would not be a 10. You well, know, that would be Overwatch 2, to be well, fair. We'd have it quite low. Right, exactly. And so, you know, it, it's one of those things where it is tough because when we played a game at the time, I, well, I, I'll reference No Rest for the Wicked again. I mean, it's probably way better than what it was when we played it, you know, uh, two months ago or a month ago or whatever it was. But we, we, when we play a game and we do the episode, we rate it right then on how we feel about it. 
Um, and so, yes, it's, you know, it's tough because you can say, well, this game was great back in the day, but it doesn't mean that it's great now, you know, and that's what we're trying to do is give our ratings for what was it like to play this game for this podcast? And then would we recommend it to people in its current state? That, that's why I'm yeah. glad this is kind of fluid. So I can, cause I mean, I left uh, disco Elysium off cause I had given it a, such a bad score cause I played it before the narration and everything. So yeah. I'm excited to go back in and check it out. And then, I mean, if you guys got it at a, a 10 and a 9.6, like I got to check it out. It's so. really, <laughs> we just had somebody in the discord server run through that and they were like, yo, oh, this yeah. game's incredible. I think was it Jigglepuff somebody, but it, it was like, yo, this game's really awesome. And they knew they were getting close to the end of it as well, but I can't imagine trying to read through that game. Oh, it was so bad. Yeah, like that honestly, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, like reading it versus voiceover, the story's the same regard, you know, either way, but it's just I can't I can't imagine trying to do that and then feeling the same way. <laughs> I came yeah. here to lead, not to yeah. read. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh the last pairing would be Josh and Ryan. So the two of you guys, you have each rated 45 games. Exact same score at the time was three. I do see that Josh might have changed uh, Hellblade 2 a little bit. But at the time, I was going to bring up the fact that you guys had Helldivers 2, Deep Rock Galactic, and Hellblade 2 at the exact same scores. And the Hellblade one really surprised me because Josh seemed so much higher on it than Ryan during the deep dive. But Josh, I do see you've bumped it up just a tad to an 8.8. Uh, Ryan's got it at an 8.5. I have it down at 7.5 under the, you know, fun, but not a classic rating. I will say I'm a little surprised you've got it that high, Josh. You do have it above stuff like No Man's Sky. You've got it above Fallout New Vegas, Hearthstone. Like, you really love your Hellblade too. Except that you're on mute. Is it? What a- <laughs> there he is. Yeah, I'm leaving it in too. <laughs> Gosh, everyone knows you're a dingus. <laughs> This guy, everybody, this guy doesn't even know how to use a mute button. Oh, Point and laugh. Man. We can't trust this guy's scores. <laughs> I, I'm so embarrassed now. Uh, <laughs> I have a good excuse. I just changed my taskbar to auto hide, which is where like the little gear mm-hmm. icon for my mute button is. And then it was like my taskbar disappeared. So I was like, oh no, I can't find it. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is actually one that I bumped up this morning when I was going through and fine tuning stuff. And I will say, I get it. I get the lack of gameplay in Hellblade 2. I, 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 I understand that. But man, the memories that that game has burned into my brain are going to be with me forever. And that alone to me is memorable enough to say this game deserves to be ranked high because there's not a lot of games that can do that. You know, yeah. like you, you leave that kind of impression on me, even if the other stuff isn't the best, I'm still going to remember that. And that memory and what's burned into my brain is going to stand out to me. And those are the things that I want to experience. You know, I'm willing to put up with a lot of other stuff that may not be the best if I leave with that kind of impression on a game. Yeah. So I mean, what's, I was just going to say, because like that, I, I'm I'm with you, Paul, on like the overall, I think it was a fair game, but that level with Ingen, um, fighting her is what took me over the top to where I think everyone should check this out just for that level. It was just, it was so good. <laughs> yeah. For that three minutes of content. It's, the game's <laughs> only six hours. Like, yeah. it's not like it's asking that much. <laughs> Go play it on Game Pass. Don't pay the $50. Yes. Goodness yes, gracious. Yes. Do that. Yeah. So you guys, uh, for games that were within 0.2, you had 29%, almost the exact same as me and Josh. Your average difference is also 0.8. Oh, So wow. it's actually the same difference as me and Josh. Shockingly, the biggest difference was me and Ryan. Oh. Although I will say, I feel like there's some outlying stats here with <laughs> Pacific Drive and Battlefield. I don't know if that would maybe change stats a, a little bit but your guys's biggest differences are destiny 2 no surprise <laughs> no rest for the wicked fall guys halo reach and pacific drive so yeah and then uh lastly just really quick here i did look at all the games that all three of us rated and there's 42 of them our most closest scores are all games that are rated pretty high it is red dead 2 God of War, Cyberpunk, Helldivers 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Satisfactory, Fallout New Vegas, Diablo 4, Splitgate, Deep Rock Galactic, and 
PUBG. All of those, there is a grand total of one point or less difference. So if I rated it seven, Josh rated 7.5, Ryan rated eight, you know, that's adding up all the differences together. So those are actually all quite close. The biggest differences, and I'll share who the outlier is, Hollow Knight. You can blame me. That's Paul. I'm way I was lower. Say, that's Paul 100% on <laughs> yeah. Hollow Knight. All right. I'll, yeah. let, I'll let you guys guess. Yeah. So yeah, I've got it at seven. You guys have it at nine and 9.1. Who's the outlier for Destiny 2? Oh, me. Josh. Josh. Yeah. Not Ryan. You might think Ryan would be too high, but it's that Josh is so low. Uh, Fortnite. Who's the outlier? Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. <Yeah. laughs> we yeah, already talked me. about that. Uh, some of these, yes, shockingly, we've already kind of covered a lot. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Paul. I was the outlier. Yep. Yep. No rest for the wicked. Me. Josh. Star Wars Squadrons was one of our biggest differences. Ooh. Is that me? I'm going to say Paul. Me. I went, I went a lot lower than you guys. Uh, Squadrons for me was really fun for about two hours. And then I kind of hated it after. Uh, Fall Guys, we already talked about. Ryan went super high. Halo Reach, Ryan went high. And Pacific Drive is the one that's totally <laughs> wild because Ryan is card, so low baby. at 0.1. But then Josh and I aren't close either because I gave it a 4 or 5. He gave it a 6 8. So Pacific Drive, we are all over the board where we've got Josh saying it's playable. It's above that 6.5 tier. I've got it below saying stay away. And Ryan's basically saying there's nothing redeemable. About R- Ryan's it. like, this thing is infected with the zombie plague run. <laughs> run. I think anything under like a five is just like, don't even look that direction. So like, <laughs> it doesn't matter f- where it is. That's why I was like, I'm going to give it a point one Cause I was so let down, but we all agree. It's not great. Yes. So we, we have correct. that in common at least. And speaking of not great, I do want to say, cause you guys re- have referenced many times how small my leaderboard is. Um, I will say a lot of the games that I haven't played are all like at the bottom of this. So I'm not too mad about it. You know, you guys had to wait. think of all the time you spent playing all these games that aren't good. And I, I didn't have to. to, I didn't have to spend that time. <laughs> we try to block those out, man. Yeah. Josh like, wait, I, <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say, I don't want to reminisce about my time in uh, devour or uh, I, I'm higher on overcooked too than Josh. But like, there's some games on our list that are just dead now. So like, Knockout City is no longer around. The Cycle Vanilla before it was, uh, gosh, what did they rebrand it to? Uh, Frontiers. The Cycle, the cycle Frontier. Frontiers. Yeah, yeah. Frontier. Yeah. So the the old edition of the Cycle, you know, is dead, and the new one I think is dead as well. So yeah, there's some on here that you wouldn't even be able to play if you wanted, Ryan. But on the whole, you did kind of luck out. A lot of these are pretty bad. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, just as a reminder, if anyone wants to check out that new leaderboard, videogamerspod.com, and then just go ahead and click on the leaderboards tab near the top, and then you can see the new leaderboard. Anything else to cover, guys, or are we done with this one? No, I'm glad we have this new system. Um, oh, yeah. People should definitely check it out. I mean, if you're looking for a game to play, it's funny because we, you know, we always have people hop in our Discord server, which we love. I mean, we're not saying don't do that. But if you aren't in the mood to chat with people and you're going, hey, what's a game that I probably should play? Like, we just had a big conversation with a couple of people today about Cyberpunk. Where they were like, "Hey, I, you know, I have this game. I never played it. I bought it way back when, and you know, I was waiting for it to be good. And it's like, dude, it's it's good now. You should play that game, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something to play, this is a great place to go to take a look and say, "Hey, what's something that maybe I missed?" Again, if you want to hear our thoughts on it there's an episode for it. Like that's what this leaderboard is about. (laughs) So you can then go and listen to the deep dive on it and get our thoughts on it and see if you think maybe it's worth picking up as well. But I mean, that's one of our favorite things to do. It's one of the reasons we do this podcast is if we can talk about a game that we love and then somebody picks it up and they go, dude, thank you guys. Like I picked up this game because I heard your episode on it. I'm playing it. I absolutely love it. Like that is one of the reasons we do what we do. You know, and so that ability to talk about games, share games, get people hyped about stuff, sometimes share the misery. You know, we get excited about games like Pacific Drive, and then they come out and then we get really disappointed and we're like, dang it, man, like that totally missed the mark for us. You know, it's good to have people to do that with as well. Um, And then if it helps you save money because it's a bad game that we had to endure and now you don't have to, like, that's good too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the guinea pigs for it. But yeah. um, I too, with all this, like 
this this whole setup is so cool. I just want to shout out for Paul because like he he put all this together and 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 uh, came up with the idea of it and everything. So and he's the man that uh, organizes everything. Like Josh said, he's super uh, on top of all of this. So like the last episode, the last twig going over all the games, he kind of loosened the reins a little bit on me and Josh, and we're like, we don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> yeah. Paul, this is too much freedom. Tell us tell us what to say. <laughs> so, here's to you, buddy, for, for getting it all uh, put together for us, but yeah, that, that's all I got on it. Well, I think we have a very good division of responsibilities. You know, Ryan handles all the editing, Josh is handling social media, and is by far the most active on discord and answering emails. And I put together these outlines, you know, I think, I think we have a really good thing going overall. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps everything up here for this bonus round episode. Thank you to everyone for listening. Make sure to check out Patreon support options at multiplayer squad.com. Rate us five stars, join the discord and follow us on socials at video gamers pod. We love you all until next time. Happy gaming. See ya. You're on mute, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, not. dang it. I didn't get it. No, he looked. I made you look. I did look. Dang it. I looked. After I said no, I looked. Oh, that's two for flinching. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you, everybody.